properties. And here we will discuss both uh, physical properties and chemical properties. And coming to the physical properties, we are going to have few and then chemical properties also will discuss few. And coming to the first physical properties, the solubility, then melting point, taste, optical properties, and amino acids are uh, as ampholytes, switcher ion property, then isoelectric pH property, titration of amino acids. We'll discuss all these properties under the physical properties of amino acids. Let's start with the first one, solubility. So we are going to find out uh, the solubility nature, soluble nature of amino acid that comes the solubility. So all amino acids, most of them, not all, most of the amino acids soluble in water and insoluble in inorganic solvents. Then coming to the melting point, amino acids generally melt above 200 degrees centigrade uh, temperature. That's the reason why the proteins can tolerate to the high temperatures. Then taste obviously some amino acids are sweet some are tasteless and some are bitter and the sweet amino acids example are coming to glycine alanine and the tasteless is leucine and bitter is uh, arginine and isoleucine then coming to optical property that we already discussed about it uh, what is an l isomer and the d isomer so as once again I'm repeating it, all the amino acid except glycine. Why the glycine? Because it possesses uh, instead of the R, it has a H. So that's why the glycine is not is going to be a, a, a symmetric amino acid, but for all the rest of them are going to have the asymmetric. Uh, here we are having this is a L isomer where the amino group is on the left side, and here the amino group is on the right side so obviously it is a D isomer or D amino acid then coming to the next property that is amino acids as ampholytes so remember this name ampholytes so you may heard about the amphibians amphoteric ampholytes ampho means both so here amino acids are containing both acidic and basic group so what do you mean by acidic or basic? Acidic means having the property of donating a proton and basic means which is having the property of accepting a proton. So if this is going to have a donation of a proton or accepting a proton, then that property is being called as amphoteric in nature and those amino acids are being called as ampholytes. So according to the bronsted laudis acid theory, carboxylic acids of amino acids can donate a proton in aqueous solution around from 2 to 5. So here, if this is the thing, it is able to provide, donate the proton less than 2 and above 5. Ammonia groups function as bases and accept a proton and its uh, pK is 9 to 10 and these are about 50% ionized and here on dissociation we will get this one that is RNH2 and H plus where pH is equal to uh, here uh, this one will be the 8 and this is going to be in the 9. And coming to the summary of all the things that we have discussed about the ampolites is at low pH proton concentration is high therefore both amines and carboxylic acids are protonated that is they are having the positive nature and at high pH proton concentration is low therefore both amines and carboxylic acids are deprotonated example here you can see the NH2 and uh, minus COO minus at neutral pH amines are protonated that is NH3 plus ammonium ion and carboxylates are deprotonated that is COO minus so we will discuss about these protonated and deprotonated nature of uh, amino acids at neutral pH under the concept called as switcher ion or dipole ion the switcher ion is a hybrid molecule containing positive and negative ion groups okay and each amino acid it's is having its own pH for example, leucine pH is 6, which it carries, at which it carries both positive and neg negative charges and exists as switcher ion. That means it is going to have the ammonia group, 
ammonia as well as the carbon so ammonia ion as well as the carboxylic ion I'll uh, we will discuss uh, in detail uh, after finishing these two points so next property is isoelectric pH which is represented as pi and this is also uh, specific to each amino acid then what is an isoelectric pH isoelectric pH is a pH at which a switcher ion or a dipole ion carries no net charges that means a plus and minus uh, neither a plus or a minus and that molecule is electrically neutral is going to be referred as isoelectric pH and then coming to the titration of amino acids is the eighth property of physical properties of amino acid the existence of different forms of amino acids can be understood by titration curves that means uh, we will perform the titration experiments and we'll draw the curves where we will know the difference uh, different types of amino acids gives the different curves then the in detail explanation of uh, switcher ion is like this so already just a recollect of the switcher ions ions bearing the two charges were named as switcher ions by mr german scientist switcher so that's why still we are uh, the name still applies today especially for amino acids at neutral pH so this is how the ionic form of an amino acid is okay both the sides is HH here R is not there and here is carboxylic ion and here is the ammonium ion so at the low pH you are able to see the NH3 plus ion and the carboxyl that is protonated in nature and at the neutral pH both are going to have the protonated and deprotonated nature and at high pH both are having the deprotonated nature so this is going to be considered as a switcher ion let's have a recollect of the switcher ion definition switcher ion is a hybrid molecule containing both positive ion and a negative ion or ionic groups like ammonium and carboxylic is being termed as switcher ion so here is a titration curve uh, or a graph showing the switcher ionic form here uh, the pH on the x-axis they have taken and the concentration on the y-axis go on at the low pH and the neutral pH and the high pH how they are going to be here you can see this is a deprotonated nature and here it is a protonated nature at low pH from 4 to uh, 6 and there you are going to have a switcher ionic nature again it goes even though both acids and amines are present in the same molecule they mostly behave as though they are separate entities that's very important and that's why we are discussing all about this amino acids it's a unique property of this amino acids though it is containing both the acidic nature and the basic nature but those are going to not combining and behaving as a sun they're just uh, reacting they're going to have their own importance in the structure and as well as in the properties and reactions